Hello, I member Paul. Clark. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Tom. <laughs> And we're live now. Okay, well, welcome uh, everyone, uh, committee members, staff, and the viewing public to our October 12th uh, Committee of Adjustment meeting. Uh, been a great day today, great weather, so I hope everybody enjoys our meeting as just the same. Uh, we, our agenda was on our website for those who uh, were uh, wishing to see that or it's been published for uh, a period of time on our website. So calling that to that agenda, um, I'm referring to it. So. Uh, is there any declaration of pecuniary interest with regards to uh, members uh, of our tonight's meeting? All right, when does arise, you can declare at that time. I do need a mover and a seconder for the set of minutes from September 14th. All right, member Allen, member Allwood, um, is there any uh, discussion or any errors or missions on those sets of minutes? Okay, seeing none. Uh, item four on our agenda, we, uh, there's a deferred file. Uh, uh, the 2020-21, and that will be deferred to uh, an upcoming meeting. Uh, new files, uh, we have uh, two, well, I guess there's four uh, items that we'll be dealing with, but there's two, uh, two separate files. And uh, the first one is uh, with regards to A16-2021 page wise, and uh, I'll read the regulations here for this evening. Uh, this public meeting, was, sorry, before I go there, I just want to uh, introduce our committee members. I forgot to do that. We have member Allen, member Clark, member Allwood, member Martin, and I'm member McQueen, which will be chairing your meeting tonight. Sorry about that, folks. Um, so, member, Mr. Chair, to, we, we didn't vote on the minutes either. We had oh. a mover seconder, but. Jeez, I'm really slipping up. All in favor of those minutes. That's carried. Sorry about that. Thanks, uh, member Allen, on that. Um, so I'm going to, uh, with regards to the first file, I'm going to uh, read up the regulations here. Uh, this public meeting was called under section 45 of the Planning Act RSO 1990 as amended with respect to an application for a minor variance file A16 2021, affecting lands owned by Braden Robert Page and Stacy Don uh, Marie Page, uh, described as being legal address part lot 131 concession two, SWTSR Artemisia part one, 17R2969 Gray Highlands, civic address 734591 West, uh, West Back Line. Uh, the notice of this public meeting was ma mailed by standard mail on September 10th, 2021 to the property owner and to all property owners within 120 meters of the subject property, in addition to all agencies and persons identified in the Planning Act. If a person or public body does not make oral submissions at the public meeting, or make written submissions to the municipality of Greer Highlands before a minor variance is passed, the person or public body is not entitled to appeal the decision of the municipality of Greer Highlands to the Ontario Land, Tribu uh, Land Tribunal. If a person or public body does not make oral submissions at the public meeting or make written submissions to the municipality of Greer Highlands before the minor variance is passed, the person or public body may not be added as a party to the hearing of an appeal before the Ontario Land Tribunal unless, in the opinion of the tribunal, there are reasonable grounds to do so. It is important to note that if you wish to be mailed a copy of the notice of decision and you do not live within 120 meters of the subject property, you must provide your request in writing to the planning department of the municipality of Greer Highlands. The electronic registration does not represent your, your written request. Staff can provide direction to you in applying and writing for the request for notice. At this time, the municipal planner will explain the purpose and the effect of the proposed minor variance, read the planning report and advise of any comments received. So, Planner Rappi, uh, welcome tonight. Thank you. Um, the subject property is a rural corner lot, and the house and driveway are oriented to face the exterior side yard on Westback Line, rather than the front lot line, which is Road 130. The proposal is to construct a new detached garage between the dwelling and Road 130. The zoning bylaw prohibits accessory structures to be located nearer to the front lot line than the main building. So the purpose and effect of this request then is to seek relief from Section 5.6 of the Municipality Grey Highlands Zoning Bylaw in order to permit the construction of a detached garage nearer to the front lot line than the main building. In order to grant this relief, uh, it needs to meet the four tests of a minor variance, being that it's minor in nature, the request is desirable for the appropriate development or use of the land, 
and that the request meets the general intent of the zoning bylaw and the official plan. Um, I found that it's, in my opinion, it's minor in nature. It's, it's a permitted use in the rural residential zone. It's pertaining purely just to a positional aspect of, of the structure. And it's a bit of an odd scenario in that the bylaw defines the, the front lot line as the shorter line that abuts the street rather than where the house faces. So it's, it's in, you know, in practical terms, the front, the way the lot's been laid out is effectively west back line and the position of the proposed garage is not nearer to west back than the existing house. So it's, it is, is also generally maintaining the intent of the bylaw as a result of that. Uh, and it is generally desirable for the development of the land. This area is kind of already cleared and laid out as a yard. It avoids removing any other trees and it avoids uh, putting it on kind of the limited grass area to the south of the house there. Um, the official plan is not too concerned um, with the exact position of a of a structure and accessory structure in relation to the house. So in my opinion, it does meet all four tests of the minor variance. Uh, for comments received, a summary of the county comments are that county staff would recommend that the municipality work with the applicant to develop a site grading and drainage plan to ensure that any rooftop flows or alterations to surrounding terrain do not result in increased runoff onto the county's rail trail. Provided that constructive comments are received from the Conservation Authority and that measures are put in place to ensure that no additional stormwater will be directed toward the county rail trail, the county has no further concerns with the subject application. A summary of the Saugeen Valley Conservation Authority's comments were that they found the application acceptable. There's a long version of their comments attached. And the building department advised that a building permit would be required for the proposed garage. Um, <coughs> The recommendation is to approve the variance. I haven't included two conditions just to narrow the scope of where the structure can be to kind of where it's been planned. So conditions that it be a minimum of 17 meters from the front lot line, which is road 130, which is what has been proposed and a minimum of 50 meters from west back line. And that ensures it's kind of situated there. That's everything I have for the report. Okay, thank you, uh, Planner Rocky. And so uh, that's sort of in your report Port, but are you suggesting that they are conditions that will be written conditions that will be attached to that or are you uh, how would you wish to proceed with those uh, that's the recommendation it's not super critical the only thing it does ensure is that it, it's where they've planned it rather than kind of anywhere along the axis of of being closer to that front lot line um so if, if the desire is to have it go where it's been planned, then those two conditions make sure it goes there. And they do provide, I always put a little wiggle room just in case their, their site plan wasn't totally perfect. Okay, uh, the reason why I ask that is a lot of times we do minor variances to sort of set out to what they are asking for and, and not necessarily a condition, but uh, I'll go back to uh, comments from our committee. Uh, thank you for that, uh, Planner Ruppy. Uh, comments uh, uh, on the report from our committee members. Uh, member all go ahead thank you mr chair i just wanted to uh how is the front lot line determined uh, you know the driver does come out on the west back line but you, you did mention i think i didn't catch it all Planner Rocky. go ahead Planner Rocky. the zoning bylaw it says that well, paraphrasing where the there's two lot lines uh for a corner lot the shorter line is the front lot line so it's just automatically regardless of where the entrance and driveway are and then there's not a, a perfect harmony between our entrance permitting policies and the zoning bylaw so it's actually quite often that they end up being on the exterior side yard and this kind of layout happens very often on exterior lots actually or sorry corner lots thank you okay. good question uh member martin go ahead this might be more of a question for the applicant but um if the planner can't answer it, I'll defer it to them. Are they planning on putting a second driveway off of the road 130 and would that be allowed? It looked like there was some sort of a, maybe a stub or something there that they were gonna do that. But it was hard to tell if that was part of an entrance or if that was part of the rail trail um, designation. It was hard to tell from the site visit. Uh, uh, Matt, what do you think? 
Um, so as far as the site plan goes, there was no indication of that. Uh, I, I do know that our entrance permit policy wouldn't prevent that generally unless there is an exception. And the, the site plan layout does not indicate that there was going to be a second driveway. I do know that the the dri existing driveway has a yard that extends all the way over there with gravel. So I, I don't think there's a need for one in order to make it work. Member uh, Martin, do you have a follow up to that or? So I didn't go. I didn't go right into the property. I kind of looked at it from the roadway. But you're saying that the gravel, like it looked like there was a gravel pad where the proposed garage is going. Are you saying that that gravel sort of extends around to the driveway, the existing? That was my understanding from the aerial images and from what was explained. The applicant is present and he does have his hand raised, so perhaps he can provide some clarity. Yeah, let's hold that. Uh, we question. can wait until we get yeah. to that point then. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, other comments from committee members? Um, all right, seeing none then. Um, at this time, the committee will hear any presentation by their applicant or their agent. So does uh, the owner or somebody representing the owner wish to speak to this application? And good evening, Cassandra. Hello, thank you. Uh, Gilbert, he's the agent for the application, is in attendance and should be able to speak now. All right. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I'm actually the owner, not the agent for the owner. Uh, we became the owner on um, September 9th. Oh, well, congratulations. Oh, and, thank you. Uh, welcome, Gilbert. Uh, do you have uh, anything to add to this application? I, I just wanted to, in order to answer Member Martin's uh, question, that there would not be a, a separate entrance. There, uh, there is a there is a secondary uh, roadway that goes from the main end, uh, the main access way around to the back of the property, and that is more than sufficient uh, access. So there is definitely no plan, and as the planner mentioned, they wouldn't approve it anyway. So it's it's not something I would desire. So so that answers that question. Okay, I'll just go to Member Martin if she has any follow up to that. Oh, that's sufficient. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that. So just for clarity, so on our um, notice here, it says registered owner is how I read it out at the beginning of the of this particular hearing. And Gilbert, you were put down as the agent, but you're saying is, is it September 9th, you took ownership of the property? That's correct. I did the application prior to becoming the owner. Right, okay. And uh, uh, so then that's good. That that's, that's noted because this is like a public hearing. Then that, that clarifies that point in the sense of, uh, who you are and who I read out to. So that's good. Um, okay. Do you have anything else to add to go over to, uh, I, I, to this call? I just wanted to ask, um, the planner, uh, Rapke, uh, if the 17 meter setback is, is, is that important because, if we're not treating road 130 as the frontage, I'm not sure why you're holding me to that. Otherwise would be the front yard setback and not the exterior side yard setback, which would be 10 meters or 32 right. feet. I, I don't know why. I know I, I know I show, showed the drawing as where it's proposed, but that may change at some point down the line. I might want it a little bit closer. Um, I'm just, you're 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 getting, you're not giving me a lot of wiggle room there when you're making it 17 meters and it's to me it just didn't make law it didn't uh, make a lot of sense if we're not treating road 130 as a frontage uh, to keep me to the original front yard setback that's my only comment about that the other one I'm not as concerned about it it could have been written more of that as long as I don't go any farther than the existing home toward west back line which I have obviously, I have no plans on doing, but that really should be the test because that's what the bylaw says is you're not supposed to go <clears throat> farther than the house, the main right. structure. Okay, those are two good comments. I'll, I'll go back to Planner Rapke for, first one is uh, the, the distance off of uh, Road 130 and the second one about the garage being further back than the house. Matt? Yep, so those are all <coughs> Good points. Um, th that's fine. I mean, we, we can use 10 meters. The only reason I kind of did that is I was measuring based off where I could kind of tell the lot line was. Um, 
to make it seem like it was still going on the area that's already cleared. There are a bunch of trees there that are designated as significant woodland in the county plan. And given that the indication was that the garage was going to be outside of that woodland area by keeping that setback and make sure you're not granting as of right permission to clear more trees uh, when the plan was to put it kind of where, where it is on the site plan. But I mean, if that's, that's what committee wants to do and make it a 10 meter, that's okay. The only thing it then kind of changes the scope of the conservation authorities comments as well. Uh, in light of our significant woodland policies, given that they were commenting based on the submitted plan, which would not then encroach in that woodland area. Yeah, I, uh, if, if I may uh, just Go respond ahead. to that. Um, Go ahead. I definitely, I definitely, ha I know this doesn't maybe sound right, but I definitely have more than enough gravel, more, more graveled area than I would ever want there. So I would never extend anywhere beyond which is actually already fenced in. I would never go beyond the fence and take any more trees down off the lot. I don't know if that uh, makes a difference to you, but uh, there's already take there's already too much taken off it. I just want a bit more wiggle room on the existing graveled area. That's all. I would never go any farther off of it, though. So, are you talking like 15 meters, Gilbert, or or well, like? I, I'm not exactly sure what it is. I, if it's 15 meters, that's fine. I don't. It doesn't have to be 10. I just thought. Uh, 17 was a bit much, but uh, it, whatever it is, it is. Like I wouldn't go beyond, I would never build anything beyond that graveled area. It just makes no sense. I have too much graveled area as it is. Right. Okay, so uh, just on clarity, Matt, uh, we, it's nice to have a number that through this, um, and, and maybe maybe we have to defer this just to maybe do that uh, measurement again and the, on your GIS, maybe to give a bit of a rough estimate. I don't know, Matt, what's your thoughts on that? Because the gentleman saying he's gonna stay outside of the trees, he's not gonna get into the trees, which is the concern. Now the concern is, is what was uh, sent to the conservation authority. So what's your thoughts on that perimeter? So from the GIS, which I think is kind of pretty far out in this scenario, given that it's showing his lot line kind of being two meters into the physical road surface, um, if that's the real line, he's 25 meters away to get to the gravel. But again, I think everything shifted in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. Um, I was just following what was submitted with the, the site plan superimposed on a survey, uh, like 17, I think is a bit less than the 63 feet that was, was indicated. So it was given a little bit of wiggle room there. Um, yeah, it, listen, I don't, I don't want to make a big deal about it. It's, I just... That was really my only comment. I don't, I don't want it to hold anything up or anything like that. It's just, I thought it just didn't make a lot of sense to call it a front yard setback right. when it's not really a front yard anymore. But I'm not, I'm not gonna be going beyond the gravel, that's for sure. Whatever it is, it is. I don't know how, you, if you wanna leave it at 17, that's fine. It's, I don't think it's gonna make that big a difference. Well, just as long as 17 is at least the minimum from the gravel to the lot line, and we wouldn't want it to be halfway through the middle of the gravel, <laughs> and then and then then all of a sudden it, you're out of compliance to your to your minor variance. So, yeah. um, we want to make sure it meets to what you were saying, and and I, I know I know the GIS is can be off, like like as Matt said, it can be into yeah. the roadway or whatever. It's not quite that accurate. Um, What's your, what's Gilbert, what's your estimate? Do you have survey stakes there? Do you have a bit of an estimate to what it is from that uh, corner to that gravel area? Do you have a bit of a, uh, obviously 17 came from somewhere. I think the, the fence is about uh, 30 to 35 feet in from the lot line. Okay. And so the fence is kind of on the edge of the gravel. Okay, so calculation 35 feet in the metric, uh, What's that uh, divided by 3.29? Am I doing that math right? <laughs> 3.29 into 35 feet. Uh, what do you got there? Um, 10, 10 would be, uh, gosh, more than 10. 10 meters is 32 feet. So yeah. I know I had, when I, when I went there and I measured, I know, like I was basing it off 10 meters when I was originally contemplating it and I thought there's more than enough room to meet the 10 meter setback. And that kind of took me 
to around where the fence is. But then, you know, the garage doesn't have to, it's not going to be right on the fence. There's going to be, you know, at least four or five meters around it. So. If we change to 215 meters, uh, it's sort of a, it's sort of, unless I have some hard evidence to know what to make that number is, and maybe Matt's scurrying to, uh, to do that. I just want to make sure that it, it covers what your desire is and it meets the, the, the intent of what the conservation and stays out of the tree, the tree area. And so we have that basic yeah, I think, number. I think, I mean, 15 meters would be fine too. It's a couple meters less. It gives me a bit more wiggle room. Committee, what's your, what's your thoughts on that committee? Member Martin and then member Allen. I'll let member Allen go first. <laughs> okay, Member Allen. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I was just going to say that uh, as long as it's on the gravel, um, I'd be fine with that, but I don't know how we put that into a uh, decision. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, that's fine with me. If you want to make that a condition that any building goes on the existing graveled area, I'm fine with that. Is that something we can do, uh, Planner Rapke? <laughs> or maybe we're going to consider, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Matt, what do you think about that? <laughs> um, I mean, technically, yeah, I, there's always the requiring of an enforcement. I mean, technically, you know, he could go down today and cut down a bunch of trees and we don't know and put gravel there, right? Not that he's going to do yeah. that. Yeah. Just <laughs> that's the problem with a control like that versus a distance measurement. But uh, I, I would imagine that would probably be sufficient in this scenario. Yes, you, you can technically do that. I, I do like the idea of a measurement because then it's 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 locked in there as uh and maybe 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 that's the caveat is we say 15 meters or to the current gravel up to the edge of the current gravel area or something like that so then it's captured in the note cassandra what's your thoughts on that i would say the um the gravel is very hard to determine what that yeah. measurement is but we could include like 15 meters like the, the greater of the distance between the 15 meters or the, the gravel line um, as of today's date. That's right. I'm fine, yeah, I'm fine with that. Definitely okay. not going beyond the gravel. You, I can, you yeah. can hold me to that in your yeah. building permit process. And I think too, as, as, noted, as noted by the uh, applicant or, and now the owner, also as noted by our planner that the, the intent was to stay, and conservation was to stay out of the treat area. And, and I don't know if that's a note that's captured in the minutes that, I mean, that's, I think from, a, from what I, what you read, Matt, was from the conservation authority and what we saw is um, that that's the main concern is to stay out of the, um, the uh, significant woodland area. And uh, the, I think Gilbert has indication, indicated that he's uh, prepared to stay out of that as well. So that could be captured in the minutes itself. The other question that, uh, the uh, applicant owner asked was the distance from uh, the west back line, uh, can the garage be as close to the west back line, but still behind the line from the house to the west back line? That was the second question. That, that one can, if he, he desires, that can easily be changed to no closer to the west back line than the house that achieves generally. That's kind of where I was trying to measure to anyway. Um, right that would achieve the same objective on, on that direction. So there is a site plan with measurements on it. And yeah, that's that's what I used for, for setting yeah. the, the distances. I, I, just, I just don't know how 100% accurate those measurements are, that's all. Okay, so was that done by yourself or by the previous owner, Gilbert? No, they were done by me, but. Okay. So then going back to the point about from the west back line, um, the, the uh, proposal or the ind indication was 50 meters. Uh, the house says 159, 160 feet. Um, help me out here, Matt. What can For we the, con what? the condition there? Yeah. Uh, we can just change it to no closer to, uh, West, the west back, the exterior side yard, then the dwelling. Okay, is committee okay with that? That gives you a lot more flexibility. Is the committee, any questions on that uh, and changing that to that uh, 
to that uh, condition. That meets the intent of the of the zoning bylaw anyway, correct? Yep. Okay. Member Martin. So my concern is twofold. Are we getting too far into the, the weeds, so to speak, on the scope of the project and the scope of the application? And but my other real concern is we're, we're not taking into consideration the grading plan or the drainage plan that the county has asked for. So if we if we move this building site, if you will, um, what is, what's got 11.19 feet? Is that to the back? That's to where the, the county rail trail goes. So I don't think we can, um, change those distances too much. Like that's, if this is what he applied for, I think he should have known what he applied for before. And I do think we do have to hold them to something. Right. Yeah, I was trying to say if, if, if you're allowed no closer to the road and you have 10 meter side and other than interprets, the interprets, interpretants, why are we here <laughs> at the minor right. variance? Yes. Yes, exactly. And so, so, you know, the application is before us for a reason. So I think we better stick to those parameters, but, and, and not muck with that too much. So Gilbert, um, you're, when you made application previous to being the owner, uh, were, you, were you sort of advised that you needed to have some variances that, uh, to build your grads, I presume. Yeah, yes, I was, to me, this more this was more or less just to allow me to build in that general area because it is closer than the house. To me, that's the variance that I'm looking for. Right, right. Um, the, the, the garage may or may not be built exactly to those specifications. I'll have to deal with the building department at that point. It, it may be a much smaller garage that I, it, I just, that was, probably like the biggest I would ever build. It may be not exactly in that spot. It may be a little bit smaller. The 11, the 11 feet is to the lot line. It's not to the rail trail. The trail is beyond the lot line, probably another 11 meters. Um, but Maybe what our determination should have been here at the Committee of Adjustment is making the Westback line front yard. And then that would have just solved all the problems. That's kind <laughs> yeah. of what I was hoping for. Just yeah. To yeah, sort of but, treat that, that's kind of logically how the property is laid out. So then I don't have to, I'm allowed to build there. That's all. It, it sounds like this is maybe one of those things that when we get through our, or when, when there's a review on the zoning bylaw, then maybe that wording is uh, switched. But in fairness to our planning department, it, it does speak that the narrower part of the lot is the front yard and the, and the wider part or the longer part is the side. So, um, okay. So, um, Moving on here, we do need to get up to come to a, a conclusion here in the sense of, so, and that that seems to be the conundrum is because of the narrow part is becoming the, the front and the, and the west back line is the side. So um, Matt, just uh, in, a, in a summary to that, we determined that we're going to go 15 meters to, to the front yard setback, which is off 130. And the side yard setback is no closer than the home to the side. I know member Martin was saying, well, why are we here? But it is goes to that part is it's determined through that zoning that the narrower part is the front because there's two roads and it's a corner lot. So Cassandra, uh, Madam Secretary Treasurer, are you able to put some wording in play that the, this committee can sort of um, look at from a summary of the discussion that's been sort of talked about here? Yes, of course, I can share my screen. Sounds good. Okay, thank you. Committee, uh, your comments here. And then we have still have to go to the public yet too. So these are the two conditions that the garage be located a minimum of 15 meters from the front lot line, that's road 130. And yes. the garage be located no closer to the exterior side lot line, westback line than the existing dwelling. Okay, and, and will the minutes capture that part of staying 
uh, outside the uh, significant woodlands. Is that is there a minute that's going to capture that just in a sense of? Correct. Well, okay. Okay, committee, um, your thoughts on that? I still have to go to the public yet for comments from the public. Any comments from the committee? I'll, I'll just note that if you like, you can also just put a condition that no trees be removed for the construction of the garage. Like you, you can put kind of whatever you want in a condition provided it's reasonably related to the relief requested. Yeah, and that sort of addresses the Conservation Authority and the county. Your thoughts on that? Is that okay to the committee? Okay, sounds like a fact. Uh, Gilbert, uh, those conditions seem reasonable? Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Okay. So while that's being worked on now, I need to go to just get some comments if there's any comments from the public. All right. Um, any person uh, present wishing to object, support, or ask general questions about the proposed minor variance, please indicate and state your name and address. Sorry, Cassandra, uh, maybe you're sort of tied up there doing your condition there, but uh, I'll give you a few seconds there just whenever you're ready there. There is no one else in attendance for this file. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. Any last comments from committee members on this application for minor variance, A16 2021? All right. Seeing there's no other discussion, no comments from the public, your position on this minor variance, Member Martin. Can I see the amended um, conditions again? Sure. Uh, Madam Secretary Treasurer, can you post those, please? Probably easier than reading them out. Either or, I just want to make sure that the tree cutting and stuff like that has been captured. Oh, no, we can post them here. And that would, that's, uh, I should I should let you do, finish that, that last condition that you were doing and before I went to the public. <laughs> So I have that no trees be removed on the subject property during the construction of the garage. And I can certainly change the wording of that. Um, or should I, go ahead, go ahead, Member Martin. I'm sorry. I'm just wondering if the committee will entertain something along the side, lines of instead of just no trees, the significant woodlands will not be disturbed or something like that. No, um, trees in the, no trees from the significant woodlands? Sure, something, I, I think it's I think it's important to capture that it's the significant woodlands that we're trying to preserve, not I just would, a random tree. Yeah, and you might wanna say for the construction of the garage, because it's, it's the part of the garage that we're dealing with, right? So it's the, during for the construction of the garage. Okay, how does that look? Um, that's fine. Okay, any further questions from committee members other than uh, yourself, Member Martin? Okay, so there's three conditions there and uh, all right, going back to you, Member Martin, your position on this application. So I'll support the minor variance with the conditions as read. Thank you. Thank you. Member Clark? Yes, I'll support the uh, minor variance with the conditions as read. Okay, Member Allen? I also support the minor variance with the conditions. Okay, Member Allwood? I support the minor variance with the conditions as read. Okay, I also support the application for the minor variance. It meets the four tests of a minor variance. Uh, I will say that uh, subject to a 20 day appeal period from today of this decision, if there are no, no appeals, you may proceed with your uh, file and your intention of building your grads. This, this application has been approved. All right. Thanks, Gilbert. Thank you, everyone. Nice meeting you. Take care. All right. I'm just going to pull back to my agenda here again. All right, so item 5.2 on our agenda, we have three uh, consent uh, files here for, for lots. Uh, B, uh, PL21160, uh, Marsh 
Shrin. Oh, how do I say that? Help me out, uh, Marsh, Marshio, Marshio, Marshio. Am I saying that right? So this public land, sorry, this public meeting uh, was called under section 53 of the Planning Act, RSO 1990 as amended with respect to an application for consent files B24, B25, and B26 2021, affecting lands owned by Aldro, Master uh, Shrio, and Jean Marcio, Marcio, I'm gonna to have to get uh, verification on that. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, described as being legal description, part lot 22, concession seven, Euphrasia part 116 R 3646 Gray Highlands. Civic address 725807 Sagro 22B. The notice of this public meeting was mailed by standard class mail on September 10th, 2021 to the property owner and to all property owners within 120 meters of the subject property, in addition to all agencies and persons identified in the Planning Act. If a person or public body does not make oral submissions at the public meeting or make written submissions to the municipality of Gray Highlands before the consent is passed, the person or public body is not entitled to appeal the decision of the municipality of Gray Highlands to the Ontario Lands Tribunal. If a person or public body does not make oral submissions at the public meeting or make written submissions to the municipality of Greer Highlands before the consent is passed, the person or public body may not be added as a party to the hearing of an appeal before the Ontario Lands Tribunal unless, in the opinion of the tribunal, there are reasonable grounds to do so. At this time, the municipal planner will explain the purpose and the effect of the proposed consents, read the planning report, and advise any comments received. Planner Repke? Thanks. And, and, and uh, Matt, how, can you give me the proper pronunciation, pronunciation of that of their last name? And I will ask it when I speak, have them speak. Oh, you want me to guess too? I'm going to go with Mauricio. Mauricio. Okay. We'll see, I think I think Aldo and Jean are on the line, so they can they can yeah. tell us when it's their turn. And, and by no no intent, no by no means are we, we just we just want to get it right for sure. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Matt. Uh, the subject property is a farm holding that is approximately 31 hectares and is situated in the northwest corner of Rockland. The eastern half of the property falls within the Rockland settlement area boundary, while the western and northern portions are agricultural wetland and hazard areas. The property contains a dwelling and farm buildings. The dwelling use was used as the Rockland Academy in the past, and as a result, the property possesses site-specific residential zoning to permit a private school. The property has roughly 147 meters of frontage on 7th line and 414 meters of frontage on side road 22B. The proposal is to sever two lots that front 7th line and one lot that fronts side road 22B. And I know the agent is here, so I will let her go into the details on it. Um, the purpose and effect, so well, I'll give a brief overview of, of all of those. So there's three of them, B24 is to sever residential lot with an area of 0.4 hectares or 4,000 square meters and a frontage of just about 50 meters on the seventh line. B25 is to sever a lot with 4,000 square meters and 53, 54 meters on the seventh line. And B26 26 is to sever again 4,000. This has changed and I'm sure the agent will comment on that to 4,000 square meters and a lot frontage of, it used to be 49, I believe it's now adjusted to 40 onto side road 22B. Uh, for comments received, Gray County Planning, a summary of their comments is that provided that adequate long-term servicing is available for the proposed lots and that positive comments are received from GSCA. County staff have no further concerns with the subject application. Just speak a bit to the servicing there, the policy framework can trigger the need for certain studies, uh, D-series studies for well, water, and uh, septic analysis. A single consent doesn't trigger those, nor does technically any, even three of them when they're all at least an acre in size, it doesn't trigger the need for that. So the assumption under that framework is that these will meet the service and concerns. So we did not request for them to submit that. Uh, Gray Sobel, at the time of the report, they hadn't provided their comments. I believe those have been forwarded to committee. A summary of their comments is that they, they had no concerns. They provided a, an overview of, of the uh, natural heritage policies in their, their comments. Transportation commented that entrance permits are required for all three lots. 
Grey Highlands building advised that any future development will require building permits and Bell Canada and Hydro One commented they have no concerns. Uh, I will leave that there until the applicant or the agent does uh, or questions come in. Okay. Uh, before we go to the agent, are there any questions from committee members uh, to our planner with regards to the report that's been presented? Okay. So then, uh, oh, sir, go ahead. Member Albert, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I was wondering um, in the um, agent's report, there it sh shows a larger plan of subdivision, but uh, is that a question for the agent or? Yeah, I was. I saw that myself, uh, Member Allwood. So I was going to leave that to the agent to ask that question. Obviously, it's yeah. a, like a secondary. Well, Matt, unless you have a comment, I'll Matt. I'll speak to it just because I asked her to do it. So because okay. we were we said they could do the three consents that front onto roads that already exist, but I wanted to see an illustration that conceptually the rest of the area that's designated as settlement area could appropriately be. Uh, developed and that road trajectory was ideal because part of the one of the consents here has a separation it's not contiguous to the existing built up area and that was requested from us on purpose so that there would be a better road trajectory for the future whereas if you shoved it up tight it makes right. the lots on the one end all squashed so that's nothing right now other than just to illustrate that this isn't uh, premature and kind of spoiling any of the stuff in the back. Okay, uh, 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 Member Allwood, uh, do you have any further comments there? No, my only other comment was I noticed the property was for sale, and given that we uh, on the last file we were dealing with the new owner, I mean, are, are the uh, applicants the current owners, or are they selling the property, or is that a, any concern to this committee? Matt? I'll uh, let the agent clarify. I, I did talk to Aldo a week or so ago, and I, I think he was planning on just putting the lots up for sale in anticipation or getting ready. I don't know, um, okay. but I, I, he didn't mention selling it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, it, okay, thank you. I, I know that uh, looking at the configuration, and if that was to go through, that would just double the population in Rockland. <laughs> Member Clark. <laughs> yeah, I just wondered, uh, there is a, a municipal grain that goes down through that property somewhere. And I guess it's probably an easement there someplace. And I guess I just wondered if that was all taken into consideration when these were, were thought of and, and proposed. I, I, I'm just thinking what, what Matt had said is he just wanted to leave those two spaces for future consideration. Um, but that that is a good point that uh, certainly um, Matt, do you got a thought on that or just, that's good information? Um, I did not know anything about a drain. I don't have mapping for that. Um, that is good information though. Right. So Dave or Member Clark, do, do you have more information or details on that municipal drain? Uh, not a hundred percent, but the, there is one there I know and, and there, it should be from Township of Euphrasia days and uh, there should be something on file, I would believe. Um, just in your memory, does it go from which it go from which which road, and and which way does it go? Do you have a, a bit it of a goes, It goes from the south end of Rockland, okay, to uh, the swamp that's up north of of uh, right. this property. I think Mr. it goes all the way across that field. Up to up to Mr. Clark, isn't it? Or I forget that gentleman's name that that area was, right? So a member, member, uh, sorry, uh, Matt, go ahead. Yeah, to to member Clark, does it skirt kind of the edge of the woods? I am seeing a pretty purposeful looking wet ditch. Um, that that has to be the drain. It kind of goes due north once you get uh, north of the barn there. And it's, it's definitely well outside the scope of, of the area being severed, but I, I'm thinking I'm seeing it if that seems right to you. Well, that, that I, again, it's been so long. I guess I was thinking it was closer to town going down through that field. So, so just on, on clarity, Dave, or Member Clark, are you saying um, sort of west of, of Rockland, it would head... Uh, or on the south side, like or, or just it, uh, it, it's it's to me it's west of the the lots that are already built on. 
Yes. Between there and, and the, what was the Rockland Academy, it's down through there somewhere. Oh. So maybe it's outside the boundary, the uh, Rockland boundary uh, or the, the... Well, that, again, I'm not sure, but I okay. guess I know there's a pile of, pile of water in Rockland most of the, most of spring and it, it, it's got to get away someplace and, right. and that, it was a municipal drain. Do you feel it has anything, because the, the configuration is only conceptual, and we'll, we'll raise that when we have the applicant here. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. I just wanted that to be yep. brought up and thought of and Absolutely. considered. So, Dave, do you feel that it has, with these three lots and that conceptual part of, of creating an access, then if there is a municipal drain, I think there is, is uh, number or uh, Planner Rapke indicated that leaving a space between lot three and, or whatever, just gives that future access in behind for possibility, right? So that, that could be, I guess it could be any configuration if there is a drain that comes into that. Are you finding anything that in your, other than around I, the- I can share my screen if you guys would like to see what I, I think Dave's talking important. about. It's an important point, so we should- Yeah, it to... is, it is. Okay, is this it, showing my map? Can you can you zoom in a little bit? Yeah. It's my map though that you can see. I can see your map. I see okay. the crossroads. Of, yeah. There. So okay. yeah, this is the center of Rockland for reference. The westernmost uh, severance will be roughly here. Okay. And then the other two will be kind of over in this area. Yeah. I think okay. this has to be the drain. Like if I go here, I can see a culvert with this oh, yeah. ditch and then it follow it along the wetland boundary here. This is the subject property and uh, way up the north here. Right. And then more ditch here. Is that same right, uh, Member Clark? Is that sort of what um, you're there is There is that culvert and, and drain down through there, but that's coming from the swamp west of Rockland, I think. And I guess I'm thinking what's in Rockland goes down through that field, but I, it's, it's probably 25 years since I had a whole lot to do with that. Okay, so just zooming in there, it looks like a different color right there. There's uh, right, yeah, there's a different color. No further over? West. Right over, yeah, there. Is that, is that a different colored? Like there's like the part of the like a lower part of the field maybe or well, this is fence line here and this is probably this looks like dead grass. No, just just like just there just seems to be like an oval shape right 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 of your cursor. There's like an oval yeah. There's like a lighter colored yes. Right. I don't know if that's a lower area of the land or maybe that's what Dave's referring to. And and, and this obviously looks like this is a, a summertime picture, not springtime. Or you don't have the two thousand and. Um, this is 2020 uh, on here, and these are spring. This will be about uh, early May because the leaves aren't out yet. Okay, so the new the new ones are out. Okay. Yep. Okay. Well, then that would be pretty good indication if that's early spring. So, do well, you have any thoughts? Any further thoughts there? Well, I guess I, I guess I'm not 100 percent sure. I just wanted to bring it up so that there might be some follow up. Yep. And maybe maybe the agent has. Found something there too. I, I don't know. I'm just just making everyone aware. Right. And, okay. and maybe 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 it is further to the west than I think it is. But uh, I just didn't want somebody digging on top of the drain. Well, no, and it's an important thing. We don't want we don't want development in drains either. <laughs> yes. So well, that's a good point. I'm sure I'm sure it'll get figured out. But I just wanted everyone aware. Mm -hmm. um, just before we leave that, uh, uh, Planner Rapke, is that something conservation authorities look into when they're reviewing property and stuff like that? I'm not positive. I, I, they, they do speak to drainage and they, they did say given the size of the lots, they have no concerns. That doesn't mean that they looked for drain data, like a municipal drain data. I'm trying to find it on OMAFRA's ag maps in the background here because I do believe that they have 
something like this on there. I just don't use it often, so I don't know where to find it. Right. And and when they did the fail line mapping back in, I think, 06, Conservation, they mapped out low areas as well. And I don't know if there'd be any indication on that, on those maps or not. So why don't you, um, why don't you uh, keep looking there? And so are there any uh, further uh, comments then to the planning report before we move on to the agent? Because I'm the agent, uh, I'm sure she did a whole report here, so I'm sure there's a lot of information that she can share uh, to that uh, that part. Okay, you can, we'll come back to this from the committee members then. At this time, uh, the committee will hear any presentation by the applicant or their agent. So from, uh, from a public point, is there somebody here uh, wishing to speak that represents the agent or or the applicant or the an agent? Is there somebody here wishing to speak? Kristen Rennie is in attendance. She's the agent for the application and she should be able to speak. I also have a presentation from Kristen so I can share my screen. Okay, well, good evening, Kristen. Good, e good evening, Mr. Chair. How are you tonight? We're doing fine. Good. And can you, can you just help us out in the pronunciation of the owner's name? I knew you were gonna say this, so uh, we'll have to get uh, Jean and Aldo to confirm who's correct, but I think it's Marcio, but that's just... Well, that sounds pretty straightforward. I don't know. Marcio, that's easy enough. <laughs> sounds great. So the floor is yours then, uh, the, your uh, presentation's on the screen. Great, thank you. Uh, as mentioned by Cassandra, my name is Kristen Rennie. I'm a registered professional planner with Georgian Planning Solutions, and I'm the agent acting on behalf of the property owners. Next slide, please. As mentioned in the notice, the purpose of the meeting this evening is to consider uh, three consent applications, B24-2021, uh, B25-2021, and B26-2021. Uh, and the outcome of that would be to sever and create three uh, residential lots in the settlement area of Rockland and have one retained lot um, as well. Next slide, please. Uh, the property is located at 725807 Side Road 22B. And I just have a map there just sort of indicating where in Rockland it is located. Um, I know you've been to the site, so you probably know where it is. Um, Planner Rapke did talk about the uh, official plan and zoning um, information. So I'll just skip through that. And if there's any questions, we can, we can come back to it. Uh, and if you could go to the next slide and I'll just talk about the details associated with the consents. Can you go one more please, Cassandra? Thank you. So essentially um, it's to create, like I mentioned, three residential lots in the settlement area of Rockland. The first lot, lot number one, would have an area of 4,000, a little bit more than 4,000 square meters, which is approximately 0 0.80 hectares. Um, and we'll have frontage of uh, 40, approximately 49 meters on the seventh line. Lot number two would have essentially the same size, about 0.8 hectares with a frontage of about 53.8 um, meters on the seventh line. And then the third lot um, would have a frontage of uh, 40 meters on the side road, 22B, and about 4,000 square meters, which is 0.8 hectares. Um, the retained parcel would um, be 29.8 hectares with a frontage of 407 meters on the side road, 22B. Um, as you'll note, the, uh, the proposed severances are within the settlement area. And if you could slip to the next slide, um, as uh, Planner Rapke mentioned, the intent of the exercise putting this together was to show that the consents that are in front of you today would not preclude future development on the, on the lands. And so this was a conceptual exercise that Matt and I went through to show that we could have a road that would enter into the area and would not uh, eliminate you know, future development in Rockland uh, within the settlement area. Um, in, in regards to the issue and the conversation about the drainage, I actually don't know anything about that. And so I'm hoping that maybe the property owners could um, help us out a little bit with that one. Um, and essentially, I have, if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer any of any of them. So, Kristen, just yeah. for clarity, um, so we have B24, B25, B26 as listed. 
Am I is B24 number one, B25 number two, and B26 is that number three? Is how you read them? I believe so. And, I did have it written asking, down. Okay, the reason I'm saying that just for clarity, when I ask the committee, this I want to make sure they know which one they're voting on. Yeah, I'll um, I believe so. If there if it is any different, then I'll uh, I'll let okay. you know. Thank you for that. Okay, so um. I'm going to go back to committee for questions and to you. Um, Member Allwood, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Just uh, through you to the uh, agent. So in the future development, uh, the proposed road allowance, is that uh, enough for a road built to municipal standards? Yeah, it's a 20 meter wide. Uh, we use the standard, yes. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Other questions from committee members? Member Clark, I knew there was a question there. I just had to give you enough time. <laughs> no, just the two lots off the seventh line are, are quite low compared to the road. I guess I just, and, and again, in the spring, it's pretty wet in there. I guess I just wondered if, if the thought was that they would be or material deposited in there to, to build them up. I assume maybe they would have a plan. But I guess I'm just... Again, just thinking we don't want to be underwater. So, so that slot's number one and two, if yes. you're going to up to seven line. Okay, so that's B24 and B25. And I, guess, um, I guess even to, to get onto the seventh line, the road would have to come up on quite a, mm -hmm. unless it was built up a fair bit or the laneways, whichever. So yeah, the, yeah, the road seems to, Rise yeah. there, right? Right. Yes. Just, just a thought. I, yep. Just for you, member <laughs> chair, to uh, member Clark, um, yep. as part of the uh, building permit process, we do have to do a grading and drainage um, plan, which would have to show that it would work. Um, as well, we need an entrance permit. So I would imagine that there are standards that need to be adhered to to allow for enough room for a driveway to have, you know, the ability to stop at the road so that they can check left and right before they exit onto the, onto the road. So I, I think um, if that area is wet, then definitely the property owner, future property owner would want to probably bring in some clean fill and, and uh, lift up the, the level in order to make it, um, make it work both with the exit and with the, with the, um, the wetness. Thank you. Hey, thank you for that question. And uh, uh, I don't know if there was any indication from the conservation authority on that issue. And just, I know Dave, you have a great, you have great history of, of that area. So uh, that's valuable information that you provide for sure. Any other comments to the, up, or the uh, agent's uh, representative? Okay, so um, I'm going to go to the, to the conditions. Uh, for you, Kristen, to look at it in the report, they are listed there. Um, uh, Planner Rapke, do you have any comments to the, the each each B twenty four, twenty five, and twenty six? It's the same uh, conditions. And can I get you to read those, just in a sense, they're times three. But and if there are any other comments on on those conditions, you're on mute. <clears throat> Payment of any outstanding municipal taxes, uh, payment of the $500 parkland dedication fee, the applicant obtain a zoning bylaw amendment to implement the consents. These have to be rezoned to get rid of that uh, site specific permission for a school or you're, you're permitting four schools, which might be okay, but uh, mm -hmm. it's a good, good opportunity to change that. Uh, and then an entrance permit be obtained from the municipality of Gray Highlands Transportation Department. I'll also note that for B26, which is the one that fronts onto side road. Yes, the side road. <clears throat> the purpose and effect has been uh, phrased in a way to ensure that there's like 20 meter separation between that lot and the existing residential one so that that allowance can be there. So how do you want to word that? Do you want to just make sure there's a 20 meter? So you want to add that as a condition or how do you to maintain a 20 meter um, distance or between the most 
I'm gonna look at the I'm gonna look at the map. How would you how would you word that? I believe I have wording here that I think is the same that Cassandra will have. Um, it's just the regular kind of wording to sever a lot and, and so on. But then the retained parcel shall also have a continuous, regularly shaped 20 meter wide section that is situated between the proposed lot, lot three, and the lot having pin 37165072 to allow for a future right of way that will access the remainder of the developable portion of the retained lands. Okay. So I'm trusting, so that's on B26, uh, 20 meters, which is lot three. Okay. And the, the 20 meters that are north of, of lot one, that's that's already been calculated out because of the two distances of those two lots, correct? That one, yes, correct. It's actually way more than 20. There's a, a spot in order to match the trajectory of what would become a road across oh, yeah. seventh line. You have to, there's too much space and you couldn't uh, squeeze the lot all in there. Yeah, there's a lot more. I see by the map, there's, it's quite a bit more space. Okay, um, so Cassandra is working on that uh, for the for lot three. So I guess to you, uh, Kristen, do you have uh, any, well, first, I guess from the committee members, are there any questions with regards to the conditions that have been laid out from the committee members? Member Martin. Can you go back to that, Matt? I think you said the retained lot twice, and I think. Are you talking about lot three? The, the conditions that were just on the screen. Yeah, and the, the additional one was on lot, on lot three, and that was to maintain, to maintain that 20 meter setback or distance between. But he referenced the retained lot twice. Yeah, oh. yeah, that's, it was on parcel, I'll read it again. Um, the retained parcel shall also have a continuous regularly shaped 20 meter wide section that is situated between the proposed lot and the lot having pin, whatever the pin is, to allow for a future right of way that will access the remainder of the developable portion of the retained lands. So the retained lands will possess the shape in order to be able to access the developable portion of those retained lands. So the pin is referencing the lands that are to be retained. The pin is referencing the lands to the east of what will be this right of way. So it's an existing lot with a house, the, the westernmost lot with a house along the side road currently, because then the, the right of way. The westernmost, right the, the westernmost or easternmost? The westernmost from the intersection, the westernmost house on the north side of side road 22B, that is the one that, that I'm referencing the pin because it's going to be between the proposed lot and that lot, that's where the right of way is situated. Okay. That's what I thought, but I don't think it, it was worded right, but it might be. No, it's good to check for sure. Okay. Any further questions, uh, any concerns or questions on those conditions that are for lot one, two, and three, with the, which has the additional 20 meter? Any questions or concerns with that with the committee? And, and Matt, so through the zoning, we'll capture the building and drainage plan um, through that zoning, is that where we'll capture that part? So the building department has required, they require a grading plan on lots that are about this, uh, when you're in like an acre in town and you're building a new house, they'll take the grading plan. It's not generally something we would ask for at the zoning stage. Oh, okay. So does that need to be conditioned as a, as a condition then? The thing with making it a condition is you're, they're preparing, they can't, they can prepare a grading plan to kind of show that it is possible, but for fulfilling a consent, it's all kind of just pretend anyway, because then yeah. they can kind of go and do whatever afterwards. So, I mean, you, you can make it a condition. I just, I, I think it gets captured at the building stage. Right. Yeah, you're right. You have to do a bit of, you have to do a plan when you get a building permit for sure. As long as, uh, long as that's uh, adequate. That's uh, any questions, comments there from committee members on that part? All right, I hear none. Um, did you get a follow-up on your egg lands as far as your drainage? 
I'm look at the the map I'm seeing. I can I should show you this. What from what I I can't tell what parts of these are, but I will I'll show. And then I'll go to Number Martin after that. Thanks, Mark. Okay, are you guys seeing the egg maps screen? Mm, it's colorful, it's got green and... <laughs> Does it say Ontario egg maps in the top left? It's really small, yes, yes, yes. Okay, so again, I'll, I'll move for you. Oh, well, this one's pretty slow, hang on. Okay, so we're at the intersection of Rockland here for a reference. Mm -hmm. It's identifying that thing that I pointed out on the other map as the main drain. This is really slow. Here we go. Yes. Which kind of goes where we could see on the imagery. There is something else here I indicated, and I don't know what it is because the legend won't tell me. Yeah, right in the downtown Rockland, <clears throat> there is some, some, what's those little triangles mean? What's that? So it has this hatched line to indicate something, and it's on the drainage layer. Right. It's this maybe little it's, for me. Maybe so it's an elevator. Maybe it's a rise in the land, maybe? Well, so this layer is called constructed drains. If I turn it off, you'll see this will disappear in a second here, hopefully. It's taking its time. There it goes. So that's the whole thing. If I turn constructed drains back on, the municipal drain and this little hatch thing shows up. And it calls this C. And then there's one called F here, and there's one called E over here. And these do, this does traverse kind of the area we're looking at. This one here would go kind of right along the property line of the one being severed. Yes. This one here, C, is most, <clears throat> is kind of skirting the edge of what would become this municipal right of way that we were talking about. However, I think it would veer onto the severed lot at the rear. And then this F one definitely bisects it but I don't know what any of these are. I, I assume there's something related to the drain that member Clark was mentioning. So could they be considered more like a swale or a low area or just a, a low part of the field where the where water would flow? It's very possible. I, I cannot say for sure. Uh, I, so, I don't, I'm not able to figure out what it's supposed to be. So um, if it's following the lock line on both of those, then if there was a municipal road built, then you're going to build a ditch beside the municipal road. So that would sort of help address that in the location that they're both on, other than the one that intersects the middle of that, the uh, number three, you were saying. Yeah, that one's a bit tricky. Okay. Well, okay. So uh, just before I go to member Martin, she had a separate question. Any, any thoughts on that? Dave, you, you raised that. Does that sort of make sense to what you were that, saying? Those, those, those hash lines, uh, I think are are the drains out of Rockland, but they head to the to the the bigger down to the swamp. But because there's there's manholes in Rockland at the end of the arena and, and a couple of spots down the seventh line to the corner, and then then I think they go west and and down through the field. And I think it's a it's got to be a pipe. I think. Oh, a pipe. Yeah. It's not a swale or lowland. No, I don't. I think it. I think it's piping out of out of out of Rockland down down the road anyway. And I, wow, I'm not sure. Again, I my memory's not that good, and, and it was actually before my time. And uh, but I, I'm I'm sure there's something there. So if there's a pipe, there must be an inlet and an outlet. Well, the. It, the pipe connects all the manholes within town and it takes them. Oh, you know, and I assume it, it outlets way down across the field. Okay. But mm. I, again, I, I don't have enough of the history, but right. I'm, I'm thinking it's there. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to hold questions from member Martin and member Alway. I'm going to go back to Kristen um, of this information and um or this new information do you have any comments to that that's to Kristen so 
Sorry, Mr. No Chair. I was just trying to consult with my uh, my clients. Well, it's hard when we're not all in the same room, which, by the way, I miss. Is that? Yeah, I can come back to you. If no, it's okay. Other... Okay. Um, they're indicating that they don't know anything about any of these drains. So um, I don't know how to address that. I'm wondering if we need a deferral to get more information on these, because if member Clark is correct and there are pipes in the ground, <laughs> um, that's sort of something that needs to be addressed, especially if it's draining. Uh, if it is such a fact, if it is draining downtown Rockland, um, <laughs> there would have to be an easement or there's going to have to be something there that indicates that that's where the water, Dave, I mean, they're like, you're, you raised it. So you must have, you, you've known this from some reason or somehow. So there must be something that's written or tracked down somewhere. Well, yeah, I think there's gotta be an easement, I think already for the municipality to go over that property or through that property, I should say, but, uh, it, as I say, it was before my time, actually, I think it was when my dad was the Reeve in 1970, maybe, thereabouts. Because uh, that, I think that, they'd had a couple of terrible floods in, in Rockland and, and that cured the, cured the situation in, in, within the village. But I'm, uh -huh. I'm thinking it, it, uh, it may be a bit of a headache now for trying to develop the rest of the land. Well, I think it's important that we need to know where it is. Well, yes, yes, absolutely. We can't, we can't, uh, from my perspective as a chair, we do not want, <coughs> want to um, um, provide consent until we know all the facts. Yes. I guess the guiding rule, right, is to make sure we've got all the facts. If, Go ahead. If I may, just to uh, plan a rap key with regard to that map that he showed with the the, the dotted lines or the hatch lines there. What what year of a, a Department of Ag would, would that have been? I don't know. You, I go on their website and they just kind of have a list of drains. I think everything just kind of gets lumped in there and they provide what they can. Um, I, I'm, I'm tending to agree given the information that came up like prior to granting consent is the time to totally figure it out. This is really, in, in my mind, the only outstanding thing that's a concern. Everything else was totally fine. Um, I, I do, in light of this information, I, I think it's kind of premature, at least for the two consents that the drains with this mapping potentially impact. Uh, B24 is kind of free and clear of any of that stuff. Um, I, we should probably have them figure out what's here and just tie it off that loose end. So you're suggesting that B, uh, lot one B and lot two, which is B24 and 25 are outside that indication of your, uh, the map you just had on there, but uh, B3, it sort of, it sort of meanders beside it, cuts through it. And then there's also a separate one that goes through, intersects the middle of it, right? So. B25 is still potentially impacted with it being on kind of its property line. Um, it'd, be, it'd be ideal to figure it out just in case there's a condition of, like there might not be an easement. I'm looking at a survey right now from 89 that we have access to. There's no easement on, on anything, no, no parts identified. Well, it's, it's something that maybe it has to be, I, I, I'm, I'm thinking that maybe we need to defer it all only for the simple fact is, is to make sure we got all our facts. I don't know. I'm going to go to committee here. I'm going to go to the committee. Uh, member Martin and member Allwood, uh, you had you had raised an indication. You had a question and I'll go to you and then we'll come back to this. Member Martin, did you, did you indicate it? Yeah. I don't remember what my question was at this point. Sorry. Okay. Member Allwood. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I was uh, wondering whether this would all be addressed as the uh, um, drainage plan comes forward for the proposed uh, in, in the building permit stage. But uh, in hearing the discussion, since I raised my hand, I, I, I think we need to defer this until we find out a, a bit more information on, on the drains. I'm assuming these aren't just like According to Member Clark, they're not just like tile drains for agricultural fields. These are draining um, 
from manholes out in the uh, settlement area of Rockland, right? So if there's a pipe under there, it's uh, we need to we need to and and apparently no uh, right of way. And <laughs> I guess we need to figure out what's going on. So I'll, I'll uh, my question doesn't. I don't need it answered right now. I think my, my, in my mind, we need to defer this. Thank you. I think in fairness, in the sense of getting all the information, and I guess I'm going, I'm looking at Cassandra and, and member, uh, or planner Rupke. Um, obviously our archives are files. There's, if member Clark, to what he was saying is, uh, you know, these are constructed and they're not recorded somewhere, which, I find, and even for the owners, I find a little, um, well, I'm sure they, they also wonder how come they don't know about it. So I, I, I think there needs to be some, some record or some, some follow-up to, you know, to sort of find out, you know, and, and if the egg map is indicating something there, it's captured from somewhere. And, uh, and I guess, uh, you know, as, as, as indicated from member Clark, I don't think it's fair for all parties and future parties if that information isn't thought, sought out first in the sense to making these decisions. Um, any other any any other comments to that from committee members? I'm going to go back to the applicant. Hmm. Kristen, you, you, you've yeah. heard some of the discussion here. Thank you, um, Mr. Chair. Um, I just wanted to let you know that I have been communicating with my clients and they're not aware of any drains on the property. They purchased the property in 2014. There are no easements that are on the property. So that didn't come up when they purchased the property. Um, so just, yeah, makes it a little bit more difficult because we don't have that information. Um, yeah. And they wanted me to ask if the committee would be willing to approve the one lot that doesn't have the constraints. Uh, associated with it tonight and defer and move forward with the deferral of the other two well your for clarity your your point would be would be lot 2b25 yes correct thank you okay so um 24 committee? yeah and i still have to so it would be okay i have b24 is number one b2 b25 is number two am i wrong to say that is that no, you're sorry. Yes, you're correct. Sorry. Okay, you're correct. I still have to go for here to public comment as well before we, we get back yes, to correct. Make yes. Final decision and discussion there. So why don't I why don't, why don't I take the time right now to go to the public and see if there's any public comments? There could be others on the call that uh, maybe have some information, maybe not. So at this time, uh, uh, at this time, the committee. Uh, sorry, any person present wishing to object, support, or have general questions about the proposed uh, consent or consents, please indicate and state your name and address. Uh, Madam Secretary Treasurer, is there somebody or anybody online wish to speak? There is, um, both of the owners are in attendance and um, Eldo has had his hand raised. He should be able to speak now. <clears throat> okay, I see Aldo. So good evening. Uh, hi, I just, uh... Uh, I just uh, waved my hand. I was trying to uh, get that information to Kristen uh, that she gave you. Uh, I'm just watching, and uh, that's all. I'm not trying to uh, do anything here. Oh, no, and I don't want to put before, my phone up. <laughs> no, no, and before you before you leave, the proper pr pronunciation. Moracio. Moracio. Okay. okay, thank you. All right. Thank so you. Uh, thank, thank you. Um, Cassandra, is it there is just double checking there's nobody else wish to speak? Correct. There's no one else wishing to speak. Okay. Um, so in summary then to committee, um, you've heard all the information. Uh, there are proposed uh, three three consent applications, B24, which is lot one, B25, which is lot two, and B26, uh, which is lot three. Um, I, before, as I have pointed out in other decisions, you have three options, either to approve, deny, or defer. And so I think that'll be probably the best way. The conditions have been read out. Um, so, the, so 
the conditions for B1 and B2, sorry, B24 and B25 uh, was listed there as standard conditions. B20, B26 uh, did have that separate condition or an additional condition with regards to the 20 meter distance from the western, most westernly lot of the Hamlet area. I think it was described or however that was described. Um, there has been discussion about drainage issues uh, around the Rockland area heading north. That information has been uh, discussed and has been uh, raised and discussed. And uh, are there any further questions then for to, uh, to the committee? Member Martin and then Member Allen. I just have one to Planner Rapke, if I could. Um, if we defer all of these files, Matt, can we entertain a reconfiguration? Or how would that be entertained? Does it have to come back as new applications? Um, so, so like a minor adjustment to what was proposed. Exactly. To accommodate kind of the drain or something, for example? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking any accommodation will likely come through an easement. Um, so it, it shouldn't have to affect. Sorry, so were you asking about deferring all three of them and then entertaining a reconfiguration? Well, that was my first thought. So if we, if we as, as the agent, Ms. Rennie, proposed, approved number two, let's say, right, or one out of the three of them that isn't necessarily as affected, my fear is that we're going to have to reconfigure the other two. They only get three sevenths off of it anyways. Are we better off to defer all three, come back with a reconfiguration, or are we better off to, would that make it a new application if we do it like that? Well, just, so, for, just, for, some, just for summary, you're saying, say for reconfiguring number one, you may have to make number two a little smaller and move it a little bit. Further exactly, further. exactly. Right. So you have like that road stub or that green space if we had to use that green space, that proposed green space or open space, sorry, is what they're calling it. If we had to use that as a lot and make number one, the, you know, the road, the open space because of the drain, like if we had to reconfigure it like that or move number three over to where the proposed number four is right now. I'm just spitballing here, but I wanna know, I wanna make sure that if we, if we do defer all three of them, that we have an opportunity to reconfigure under the same application and we're not asking them to come back with three new applications. It can all definitely just be modified under, like we would just figure it out and it would end up being minor adjustments. For example, number three uh, in the original application until today, it was proposed to be 49 meters or whatever, right now it's changed to 40. Like that's, that's minor. And in the scope of something like this has no impact on anything. Number three is totally uh, separated from one and two. One and two are the only two that really affect each other. And in relation to the road, they already start number one as far north as you can go while maintaining the proper trajectory from the future allowance on the other side. So that can't really move because then you end up doing this with your roads, which you don't really want. So that's kind of stuck where it is. And also, so lot one, just for information, lot one B24 is the one that's completely unaffected according to the, the ag mapping that I'm seeing, not lot two. It's the south end of lot two which is effectively right along its property line anyway. So I don't think it's going to affect any configuration of, of the shape of that. So hang on. So for clarity, lot two uh, is closer to the downtown. You're saying it's more affected than lot one. It's the southern lot line. So the maps sideways in the report. Um, but the southern lot line of lot two is where the drain is indicated on the ag mapping. So it's lot one that is unaffected. Lot one is free and clear, yes. Okay, I misunderstood that then. Okay, so lot one is unaffected right now, but lot two and three are affected by the municipal drain and may need to be reconfigured anyways. 
Okay. So if there's a municipal drain just carrying on for member Martin is it's an easement, but you can't, you can't develop on it, right? You have to maintain is access to it because if the drain failed, you have to get in and repair it. So you can't have building. So it, it's, it has to be outside a building envelope. Like the building envelope has to be outside wherever that is indicated. So, but I'm going to big picture this for a second. Eventually they're looking at 13 lots, which I understand would have to go through a plan of subdivision, but let's pretend that there, those 13 lots are reconfigured into nine lots only. That's going to affect lots one and two. So the question still is, are you better to approve one now and lock them into that or have them go back to the drawing board for a whole new plan of subdivision. Or, I know, and I know we're not approving a plan of subdivision, don't get me wrong, but I know that maybe they can reconfigure the whole thing and lots one and two are now one lot, right? That's all I'm suggesting. And how accurate is the egg mapping to the exact location of where those drains are, right? I mean, well, that, the, you know, that that's something that we'd have to get further information on. That would be part of the deferral. That's certainly something that needs consideration further. But um, I'm skeptical to to approve one of the consents as provided today and defer two. I'd rather defer all three is where I'm sort of leaning. Right. So let me just follow up with that. If there is a municipal drain or some kind of a drain that's draining downtown Rockland, um, how would you go in there and identify or locate it properly? Would you have to camera it? Would you have to, is there ways of going out in, I don't know, I'm, I'm asking, how do you, like, if, if, if Member Clark said 1970, uh, well, we have to have a drainage superintendent of some sort that would have to know. I don't know who the engineering people are. I don't think we'd have somebody on staff that does that, but there would have to be a drainage superintendent that to yeah. determine that, right? But somehow, somehow, somehow it has to be determined where the example right. is. That, that's yeah. my whole point, right? And um, and it uh, may not have been cleaned out or even used since the seventies. That may be a very real possibility, but it's still. I mean the the it's still there. It's still infrastructure that is there that needs to be recognized somehow. And, and, and maybe it's, yeah, and, and maybe that's a whole separate conversation from the municipal standpoint. Maybe it, there's, there's obligations there as well. Um, I think member Clark's ready to say something there. <laughs> um, I, I, I don't wanna, I mean, if we're thinking of heading that direction, we would better just spend that time or, and, and or just this is the look, my last comment is or the hatched line could mean absolutely nothing and they were hatched lines that were there right so the hatched line could mean absolutely nothing as well that is a, a possibility too it could be just a low land or a swale or something we, like we just don't know yeah right but i think as member clark saying there is actually drain drain outlets in rockland that actually go somewhere Dave, so that's one thing. I guess you could probably indi indicate that maybe through a dye test or something. I don't know, like the, to figure out, you know, if, if it's, if the drains are on municipal property, where is it going? And I think in fairness, probably to the owners and everybody, you know, you know, maybe there's an obligation to determine <laughs> where is all that water going? Member Clark? And then Member Allen. Well, yeah, I, I... I think a little investigation would, would, would go a long way. I and mean, I guess I, there, there's not too many people left to, from, from the 70 era that uh, are still around to, to guide us in the right direction, but there's got to be paperwork someplace. Yeah, it's got to be archived. It's got to be archived somewhere. And, and I guess I'm not sure. I, I don't want to hold this thing up either as far as that goes, but I just thought it should be brought to the attention. And, and I guess I want to, would like it to be work for everybody and the municipality because if, if, if it's a municipal drain that gets 
it's it needs to be compromised, right. then, then downtown Rockland might be underwater again. Yeah, and that creates other problems as well. So um, yeah. So anyway, I just I just thought it, it should be brought up, and and I was hoping maybe conservation or somebody would would have a handle on it, but maybe it uh, predates them too. I don't know. Well, um, possibly, possibly. Obviously, obviously, there's some there's some depth to what you're saying. So like the drains go somewhere, right? So we need yes. to find it. Yeah, for sure. And I guess just, I guess I prefer it deferred. And I don't know whether we can find all this information out in a, in a month, but uh, or before the snow flies or any of that. So I guess, I, I guess I prefer a deferral of all three at this point. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Member Clark. Member Allen, sorry about that. I know you had indicated to the speaker earlier on. So. Well, the question that I was originally going to ask got it got asked and answered. So, but I do have a, a, another question. Um, could we, if we wanted to approve these lots, could we make it conditional on um, satisfying the municipality of Gray Islands as far as the municipal drains? So the only. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to go to member Rap or planner Rapke on that thought. Okay, so is that a possibility? The only issue with that is so, say um, we do some investigation and it is the map is correct and everything's where it's saying, and there's some form of drain and there is no easement currently, then the solution is kind of to put an easement, which you would then also put as a condition. So then you kind of miss that opportunity to make the easement. The condition in order to grant the consent so that that kind of removes that makes it a bit tricky and I, I was thinking if it's a condition and it ends up being it's going to take more time and weather wise with heading into the winter and maybe in the spring i'm sure the spring thaw would tell you <laughs> where it's going somewhere uh through a dye test but you may need that like so going back to you remember alan is that is that a condition that may take longer than a year? Because remember when we, we sort of um, set our conditions, you have to fulfill those within a year registered, I think in two years, I think if that's correct, right? So, or they can come back for an extension, I guess is, is another option. I'll, I'll go back to you, Councilor Allen, because you would be asked a question. Well, I, yeah, I understand the easement part. So it does make sense to be able to add that in as a condition. So maybe we, Unfortunately, maybe we will have to defer all of them in case there is some kind of reconfiguration of, of the plan. Right. And, and just for fairness to everyone and, and help me out here, uh, I guess our municipal staff, whether it's uh, our secretary treasurer or, or planner Rapke, and I, you may have to source out, where does the municipalities, obviously through planning, you got to find information. I know we had this situation uh, a few months back with the Brewster's Lake and an original an agreement and stuff. Where do you go to get that information? Where is your, like, do you have to go to, at one time it used to be uh, the registry department, but then I think Gray Roots was holding or held, or was held a lot of the original uh, lower tier, well, townships this would be the township of euphrasia is is all that archived at great roots so you're able to go back and, and okay so there is an opportunity to go back and search that information so uh cassandra do you want to speak to that or um i think that would be an excellent place to start is the the archives at great roots um as well as if there's any other municipal records um but starting there and then perhaps we need to sort of take that a little bit further as member martin mentioned with the municipal engineer right okay planner rocky any thoughts any other further thoughts on that for information so with municipal like most of our stuff is all in our mapping system like that's where i get everything that i look at is all in our maps right. there's there's zero information on a municipal drain there um I only knew about the municipal drain thing just from a conversation I had with Raylene one time where she mentioned that in Southgate, they have them all over the place and it's, she knew about that map. 
Uh, I, this I just searched that whole thing. This is the only one we have. It looks like, which it's unfortunate I didn't know about it. Uh, the director of transportation generally comments on things like that, but I didn't get anything like that. And the conservation authority, I always kind of assumed spoke to drainage stuff too. And it's it's just uh, it just seems nobody knew this was here. It's kind of just lucky Dave <laughs> has this history with the area to even know about this. So. Um, I don't, I don't know where I would know to get that in, like, because for every other consent, I would not go to the Amafra thing, just assuming there's a, a drain to look for. So, so I would think if there's a registered drain or a registered something on a piece of property, you would think that would have shown up if there was a title search on that property. It used to be when you used to go to Own Sound, you could go to the registry office and you could pull the book out. And it would have every little thing that was attached to every property on that. And I don't know if that's available. It's got to be somewhere, but it would. So it, obviously if it was a registered municipal drain, it would have been attached to that property somewhere in the 70 or 1970 or whenever, because, you know, even the laws back then as a municipal, I know municipal drains go back to the thirties. I know I had uh, one I experienced that was in the South part of Osprey where uh, the people that own the property brought us brought the piece of paper saying, "Look, we have a municipal drain to the municipality. We need to deal with this." So sometimes it's it's in it, it, they come from different places and 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 that sort of thing. So anyway, so I, I want to move on here then. So we've had a lot of good discussion here. Um, uh, we've had nobody else from the public other than the owners. Uh, any further any further discussion on this on these three applications? And I guess if the feeling is a deferral on all three, uh, Cassandra, is that, a, is that something that can come through a motion or procedurally do I need to go as I laid out before either approve, deny or defer on each file? I seek your guidance here. Thank you. Um, I, I think just the, there has been a lot of discussion on which ones might be approved and which ones may not. It might just be a little cleaner for the minutes um, to go through each file, um, whether that's deferred or um, supported. So then just for clarity, if, if, if a vote is for deferral, do they, should they give a reason why? Correct. Yes. And I can capture that in the decision. Thank you. Okay. So I have them listed as B24, B25, and B26. And as the map I'm looking at my screen here, number one is the most northerly, number two is in south of number one, and number three is on the side road. So just, are there any further questions before I call out each three from committee members? Okay, so for the application for consent on B24, which is number one, your position on this application, member uh, Alwood. I uh, vote to defer, given the information we received about a possible uh, municipal drain. Okay. Member Allen? I also um, think we should defer uh, to get more information on the drains. Okay. Um, Member Martin? Uh, I vote to defer to gather further information on the municipal drains as well. Thank you. Okay. Member Clark? Uh, yes, I would vote to defer on the, to, to find out more info to see if my memory is as good as I think it is. So, yeah, I think uh, deferral because we need more info on the drains. Okay, thank you. I also uh, uh, support the deferral for more information. Uh, the question, and I guess I do have then, is the deferral would, I guess, uh, for clarity for the applicant that because everyone has indicated uh, for more information on the municipal drain, so that would be deferred until that information is available. And then I guess as staff feel appropriate to uh, bring back that application. Okay, so that, that B24 number one has been deferred. Okay, moving on to B25, this is number two. Your position on this application, uh, Member Martin. 
I vote to defer this application as well until we have further information regarding municipal drains. Okay, member Allen. I vote to defer to gather more information on the drains. Okay, member uh, Allwood. I vote to defer until we have more information on the municipal drains. Member uh, Clark. Yes, I uh, vote to defer to get more information on drains. I also, as, as Member McQueen, I also uh, vote uh, to defer to get more information on the municipal drains. As I said, be, on the B24, uh, that'll be to the staff's uh, indication when that information is adequate, and then that uh, file will come back to committee of adjustment. And then final one is B26. And this is as indicated on the map as lot number three. In your position on this application, uh, member Allwood. I vote to defer until we receive more information on the potential municipal drains. Okay, member Clark. Yes, I vote to defer until more info is gathered on the uh, drains. Member Martin. I also vote to defer uh, based on uh, more information forthcoming for our municipal drains. Okay, and uh, member Allen? Uh, vote to defer to gather more information on the drains. Okay. Uh, my, myself as member McQueen, I also uh, suggest we defer to get more information on the municipal drains. That, that file has been deferred, uh, subject to that information coming back uh, to, the, uh, to the committee when uh, staff feel that's appropriate, when the information is adequate. I guess the question, so all three files then, in summary, B24, 25, and 26 has been deferred. Uh, are there, I'm going to allow this you, um, from the uh, uh, applicant, or I should say the agent, uh, do you have any questions with regards to, I know this is sort of a unique situation, do you have any questions uh, to the committee? Mr. Chair, through you, I don't have any questions. Other than, I guess, Matt and I will figure out when the appropriate time is to come back to the committee. Right, right. Okay, thank you for that. And uh, so we're just going back to our agenda. Good discussion, everyone. Um, it's uh, always good to get all the information and uh, make the proper decisions. Uh, other business, do we have other, any other business to the committee? I don't know if there's any discussion on the uh, conference next year, uh, um, Cassandra, is there any, or Member Martin, has there been any discussion of that being, I thought they were talking about Niagara Falls and that would be a, a live, or, uh, or not a live, well, I guess it would be live, but I guess it would be in person, I guess they call it, um, just for committee members, just to keep in the background. Any, any conversation or thought about that? Uh, so the last I heard from, um... OAC was that we are doing fall lunch and learns virtually. Again, that schedule should be out very shortly. Um, I have to say, I'm really impressed with their lineup this year. So um, watch for those. And I haven't heard, they haven't made the final decision on if it's going to be in person. They're still hoping for in person for next year, but fingers crossed. I know I got, uh, just as a side, I got noticed today from the Ontario Good Roads that they are doing an in-person conference this year coming up in, in the new year. Cassandra, do you have anything to add? Or um, Just that I had reached out to OACA staff um, just a couple months ago for, for budget purposes, and they were planning to attend, um, sorry, planning the, the 2022 conference at the Blue Mountain Village. Oh, and then the following year in 2023 in Niagara Falls. Um, so, so my thinking there was that it, it, it could perhaps save the committee some, some money because we likely don't need to stay the night or at least not all the nights uh, and the whole committee may be able to attend. Right, that, that's, uh, that's good, uh, good work there by following up on that for your budget purposes. And uh, I'm trying to think, was it 2000 and 16, maybe when they had the last one in Blue Mountain. I'm trying to think when that was. I remember <laughs> I attended the OPVI conference in Blue Mountains a number of years ago, and maybe five years ago, but I'm, I'm not sure I've attended the OACA conference in Blue Mountain, so it might have been quite yeah. some time. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking 16, 
somewhere around that neighborhood, the 15, 16, I think. Uh, I don't remember, Alan, were you on the committee? Were you, did you attend that one? I'm trying to think. The mountains, no. So it must have been uh, prior to this tournament for sure. Okay, so there's no other business. Um, our next meeting is scheduled for November 9th, November 9th, November. <laughs> um, and there's, right now there's currently two files. So seeing there's no other business, would somebody care to move the adjournment? Move by member Martin, second by member Clark, that we adjourn, all in favor? Okay, and I'll say that at 644. Good night, everyone, have a good evening.